Sterling Clark and his wife probably envisioned just a place to see their collection. But at the same time, they established an institution that had no restrictions on what might happen in the future. They knew that in embracing a college community, there might be things that might happen with that institution if it were endowed well enough and on a large enough piece of land as he gave it that might surprise them. We're more than simply an art museum. We're also a center for research and academic study in the history of art. It's very well used and it's very well loved by the community. And as the collection grows, we're slowly running out of room. When I came to the Clark in 1994, we knew that we needed to cobble together a space for special exhibitions. When that was completed, many people close to the Clark thought that we were finished, but we knew we wanted to begin to get focused on the next step. One of the reasons we did pick Mr. Ando was his classic modernist style that could mesh with the two somewhat discordant buildings that we had on our campus. When you're in a gallery of Mr. Ando's, you almost are in a sculptured space as opposed to simply a built space. The clock has been growing since it started, and now it's another chapter of the life that has been going on for many decades. The Stonehill Center is an unbelievably appealing space, and it will look seamless within the context of this new visitor exhibition and conference center. This is a space that's supposed to look like it doesn't exist, that you're actually mm -hmm. walking through to the water. I do appreciate where the design team would have frustration here. I mean, this is where function is challenging design. We've had a lot of interaction with the architects about basically every square centimeter of the buildings and how they function. We've wanted to be sure that we don't lose that sense of the intimate viewing experience that you get at the Clark. The Ando building will have very clean, modernist spaces that are a wonderful canvas. The best that the architecture should do is to really let those artwork be able to shine and speak to the people themselves. At the same time, I'd like to try the best for the architecture to really relate to the landscape in a way that it feels like it's a sense of harmony around the campus. We're in the midst of great works of art and very strong humanist ambitions. In some ways, the landscape has to be elevated in that way. So it's both rural and quiet and in the country and also really civilized. Expanding the Clark campus presented many challenges, but what has transpired, I think, has been something that really embraces the notion of the Clark actually as a great thing that just happened to be there. I don't know of many art museums that have that opportunity to go look at a Renoir or a Monet and then be in the countryside and just sort of commune with nature. I can just imagine looking out my office window and seeing our scholars as in ancient Greece walking the pathways and thinking at the same pace. We really want a sense of being just a minute from the middle of a New England village. So you want the experience to be somewhat natural from views to the mountains and also intimate landscape experiences on a small scale. unusual institution and that we're both a research center as well as an art museum and now the Manton Research Center will express the research nature of our program in a very direct way. It's a whole new vision of what a library, a reading room, a general complex could look like. Annabel Seldorf has in a very subtle and confident way taken the spirit of the Manton Research Center and the original museum building and actually made them come alive again and doing it in really modern form. The mandate for us was to say, make it better without anybody noticing what you've done. It's 
going to be so spectacular here. I'm the most excited about the natural light and the new space of the study room because it will be very open and welcoming. And I think that's the most important thing we can do is welcome people to look at art. Once they've experienced this world, they're so eager to come back and think their deepest thoughts and write their greatest books. We've taken the opportunities to do different things with our collection during construction periods rather than seeing it as just a period of closure. Our goal is to have a very active program in Williamstown, but we're also doing new projects and new initiatives in New York and globally. We have a traveling exhibition of 73 of our greatest French paintings traveling in Europe and in Asia. We invited Mark Dion, the contemporary artist, to do an installation in the Explorers Club that was inspired by an expedition that our founder, Sterling Clark, had made to northern China. All the things that we do now will be exponentially raised to a higher degree. We are learning to expect the unexpected by going through this process of change and thinking outside our normal box. A lot of museums want history to be very static and stay the way it is and don't question anything. But challenging preconceived notions is very much what we're about. We want to kind of maintain the familiarity while also opening up a future of possibilities. That's really one of the goals. It's not to set a vision but to expand the borders of what's currently happening there and provide spaces for a new generation to be thinking very differently about what the institution is. I think we're gonna have Williamstown's most interesting skating rink. We're worried a little bit about hockey pucks and all that glass. <laughs> <laughs>